I see memories out of the past Memories that always will last Of a place beside the sea no other strip of ocean anywhere in the world, I would say, that equals Waikiki. There is something about it with its backdrop of Diamond Head that is incomparable. And everyone senses it. The, the ancient Hawaiians sensed it. I don't think I've seen any other place like it where you have such a beautiful combination of water and weather and air and culture. There's surf and sand, friendly people, clean environment, safe. That's very important when you've been other places in the world. Historically, of course, it's terribly important. But it's historically important because Waikiki in itself was such a charmer from day one and still is. You can still have a lot of fun there. You can still be proud to show people this icon, and you can still capture a good sense of, of some of the best of Hawaii and Waikiki. And I know lots and lots of people, including Richard and Jean and Outrigger and the Kelly family, have worked hard to preserve those values in Waikiki. It was the feeling of Ohana and the feeling of people taking care of each other. That really was the one value that I think I extracted from, uh, from my childhood here. Everybody knew each other, and uh, it was a wonderful place to, to grow up as a kid. Waikiki was kind of a sleepy village. It, um, it really didn't pick up tourism until after the war years. We lived at the corner of Seaside and Cujillo Avenue in a very small house there. Cujillo Avenue didn't even go all the way through. There was a great big jungle there of halakoa and uh, old wire fence. And As kids were told that we were never to cross that, uh, that fence. I grew up with the land. I, I was a surfer kid just like practically everybody else around here. I enjoyed walking, walking on the beach and, and fishing. We had our own surfboards. Richard had a big solid board and it took two of us to carry it out in the water, to the water. And I had a hollow board, which was kind of tricky to stand on all the time, but we grew up surfing and swimming and body surfing. We sort of grew up here in a vacuum. We got our news by having reserved seats at the uh, Waikiki Theater, and every once a week we would go down there, and the first thing that came on was the movie tone news, and that's where you found out what was going on in the world. Nearby is world-famous Waikiki Beach, Hawaii's greatest resort where magnificent hotels are headquarters for the social life of the city. So we, we, we really sort of assumed that this was the way things were. Everybody had a beach, everybody had a Kalakaua Avenue, everybody had palm trees. And uh, it, only, it was only actually when I went away to college that I really began to understand that the rest of the world was not like this. They had the opportunity to be there in Waikiki as their parents were playing this big role in helping to create the destination that Waikiki is today, something that people all over the world want to come and visit. They got to see it happen as children into adulthood and be part of it. Roy and Estelle Kelly were both hard workers and I think what it's important to know they were a team and they really you know did everything together. When they came to Hawaii they actually had fifty dollars between the two of them. My father sat at the, by the front desk and picked up people's bags and roomed them himself. We, he always taught us that we all had to do the dirtiest jobs no matter what and we all pitched in. We always had a, had a job to do whether it was folding towels or serving breakfast or, uh, or operating the, the old switchboard and that, that's, that's sort of the way we grew up and then as I came back and became part of the community then I, I always was dedicating some of my time to helping the community with that same spirit that there's something out there that needs to be done let's go do it. Through my other hat of being in the practice of medicine I knew that there were people coming in from the neighbor islands 
for, for both uh, helping their, their kids who were going through hospitalization and for the cancer situation. And, and we had some hotel rooms and I, I tried to match the two of them up to, to see if, if we could help them out. They've helped literally thousands of, of families of sick children in the state. They see something, they want something to happen, they just get involved, roll up their sleeves and do something about it. There was a need in Waikiki for watchful eyes and Jeannie Rolls helped start the Aloha Patrol. We were very successful. We would report street lights being out, we found lost children. One patrol one night spotted a guy who had just robbed an ABC store and we cut, turned that into the police and right away they were on the scene. When Jeannie gets involved in something, it's not just a name or it's not just a passive presence. Jeannie is a force. Jeannie Rolls was in the first uh, docent class of Iolani Palace. I really have a deep love for the Hawaiian culture and wanted to learn more about it. When I grew up here in high school, uh, there was we did not teach Hawaiian history in school. We had one paragraph, well, I would say one sentence in our history books that said, Hawaii became a territory at this state, and that was all you would see, period. She embarrasses us sometimes by her knowledge of what she knows about the history of, of our, our islands. Richard and Jean both have this tremendous passion and commitment for Hawaii. Richard, I think, is well known. Some have called him the father of the convention center. I know how passionate he was about the convention center and how difficult it was at times because he was receiving so much criticism. He would take a little projector in this big tray of slides around in his car, load it up, go give a presentation to anybody and everybody who would listen to why we needed a convention center. He felt education needed to be done, so by golly, he was going to do it. And um, we all benefit from what he did. The convention center has been an incredible thing uh, for the Honolulu Marathon. We were able to move our expo there and for the first time have a world-class facility within walking distance of the hotels. I think, especially the people that come from Japan, the thing that, that keeps drawing people to the Honolulu Marathon is the culture of Hawaii. I have often said that tourism can be the keeper of the culture. And you know, one of the things that, uh, that we have always focused on is to bringing the the Hawaiian culture into, into our activities. All of the Kellys understood that it was important to be good hosts and to share the culture and the place. And from that, developed their Kiana Va'a program, which brings uh, cultural education and keeps the Hawaiian culture alive and very active with their employees so that they can then share it with their guests. Another thing that I've always personally wanted to make sure we had was music and dance around them around our, our properties and, and we're continuing that tradition now in the in the beach walk we have that large open area with this with a stage there and we have a continual parade of, of music and dancers and performers it's a melting pot of cultures i think uh, it's not just uh, the embracing of our hawaiian values and culture and knowing that hawaii is a melting pot i think is what makes us quite unique as a destination the visitors used to delight in coming to see Frank de Lima. He was their window on our cultural world and our diversity. Buona serda, buona serda. My name is Francis Cardinale Vermicelli El Dente. Vaticano Delegatio, bringing blessings to Jeannie Rose and Dr. Richard Kelly. Na imbagarbihim magandagabi. My name is Imerda and I am very, very happy to be here to say salamat po to the Ostia Nina, to Ginny Rose, who has never missed an opening night. I would like to give her a pair of shoes. I would also like to give a gift to Dr. Richard Kelly, who is sharing the honor. But I was told that he does not look good in a pair of high heels. I saw Maria Josep. What am I talking about? Richard and Jean really epitomize Kaimana values in their best sense. We talk so much about the past, but unless we can preserve the past for the future, there's no real reason to do this. And that's what Kamaina do. They really care that um, Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian spirit lives on.
When you look at the way they have run their business and worked as a family and, and what they've contributed, it's all about caring about people. You know, they, they have a business here and they operate a business, a very successful business. But at the same time, not forgetting our community, our people, and, uh, and ensuring that all that we do is pono. And I think that's important in saying, what is a kamaina? Someone that, you know, truly believes aloha in the heart is a kamaina that lives it every day. And uh, I think Dr. And, and Jeannie are true examples of our warmest kamainas here. When, uh, when I was a kid and, and growing up, most of the businesses here were local owned and operated businesses. The, the, the hotel managers who were here were here for a long time. They became involved in the community. They were part of the community. They helped the community out. And, uh, and to the extent that, that we were one of the few Kamaina firms that's still operating here, I hope that we can continue that, that feeling for a long time into the future. We all have a responsibility as Kamainas to share the love of Hawaii. I feel so privileged to have been born and raised here in Hawaii. It's a unique feeling that's nowhere else in the world. I miss the magic about you, magic beside.